In this video, we're going to be looking in the Hammertech DOS 1102 digital storage oscilloscope. It's 110 megahertz at least it claims and one giga sample per second. And here's how it looks pretty much an overview of it. Very small little guy actually. Only thing I don't like right off the bat is that when you go and put the AC in, it sticks outside. So that's gonna take about two, three inches off any space you have just because they should have made this go out through the back instead of the side. But you can fix that with an angle plug. But very small. See there, it does got rubber to keep the thing from, you know, sliding around on your bench. And then here's the back side of it, essentially. You got your USB port. There is no other ports in the back, and there's no fan. This is fanless. Here's a handle right here. And then another nice thing about this scope is the buttons are pushable, too. But the problem is, you can see because it's light, it's going to slide around and stuff like that. Now, it does got, you know... On the bottom of this feet, you can also push out, which also got the rumper buffer, so you can actually get a better viewing angle as well, too. And then, therefore, still kind of slides around, so you would actually have to hold the scope in because if I go ahead and push it, you can push the buttons, but let me make sure I got to sit it down right. Yeah, you still have to hold the scope in place to actually go and push out, which is not really a big deal. We got this on your bench, but one of those things to watch out for. It does come with two scope robes. The nice thing about them is, if you look at that there, it tells you the frequency that they're actually weighted for. And the reason why I say 6 megahertz and 100 megahertz, because in one times... It'll be 6 megahertz and, you know, 10 times, then it'll be a 100 megahertz, you know, pro pretty much and stuff like that. And it tells you, of course, the cat ratings and stuff. One thing I would have liked to see is the capacitive loading on there. And some of the higher end, you know, probes, they actually put also the capacitor rating on these actual scope. And they didn't do that there. There's your adjustment for them. Pretty much basic, you know, scope, um, resistive scope probes and stuff like that, but they do do the job. But here you go. So I'm going to go and set this up on my signal generator, and we'll go and test it to see if it's actually 100 megahertz. So we're going to do the boot test, and we're going to see how long it takes for this digital storage oscilloscope to boot up, and I'll subtract about four seconds off the camera since I powered it up now. I gotta say, it does have a nice big clear screen, which I like. There you go. Let's go ahead and let it boot up. Hopefully it'll boot up pretty quickly. And there you go. It literally took about 22 seconds for it to fully boot up. And I gotta say, that screen is nice and readable. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the signal generator ready. And I'll be right back once I'm done. So I went ahead and turned on my signal generator. I do got a 50 ohm terminate because this does not have an internal 50 ohm termination in it. So right now, I'm essentially going to be feeding a 2 volt peak to peak 1 kilohertz. Let's just see if it reads that. And yep, you can see it's bang on. You got um, 500 millivolts per division. And you can see there it's reading 2 volt peak to peak. Let's go into a triangle. We'll do square wave. You can see what the square wave looks like. You can see ramp and then you can see pause. And then if we go to ramp, let's just go out and you can see right there the steps. So yeah, it's doing pretty good. And then there's sine wave again. So now we're gonna go 100 kilohertz. So, all right. And then of course, because we speed it up. And then there you go. And then we'll go to also square wave two on that. Cause that's what people are gonna wanna see. That's what a 100 kilohertz square wave looks like on this scope. So it's doing pretty good so far. Now let's go to, of course, one megahertz. So there you go. Let's see what a one megahertz square wave looks like on this. And I gotta say, very good. We'll go, go triangle. You can go ahead and see ramp. 
and you can still see the stepping in it still so pretty good all right so we'll go 10 um 5 megahertz so we'll go 5 shift meg and that's when you guys start to see of course it not but it still looks like a square wave so pretty good it actually it's doing better than a lot of these cheap oscilloscopes do all right and then we'll go megahertz so we're at 10 megahertz now and you can see that's where it is, but the frequency counter's dead on, and it still looks sort of like a square wave. Triangle still looks sort of like a triangle. And there's your sine wave. You can see linearity, though, right at 10 megahertz, that starts to drop off a little bit. So it's probably got linearity issues and stuff like that. But overall, we'll go ahead and do the higher bandwidth and see if it hits the neg when it when it hits the negative 3 dB mark and stuff like that. But I gotta say, very, very good. I'm very happy with it so far. So we'll go and turn it off. We'll test out channel two just to make sure it works correctly, but we'll do all our tests to channel one. And sorry, so I have it hooked up to channel two, so we'll go and hook, turn off channel one. We'll turn on channel two. We'll, of course, go into trigger. We'll select the source to channel two. Okay. Turn off the menu and we'll go ahead and see what it looks like and we'll slow it down a little bit so that way we can come in and then there you go you can see a nice sine wave same thing it's dead on two volt peak to peak which is what i would expect and let's just go ahead and go to 100 kilohertz so we'll do 100 all right we'll speed it up and you can see there it's bang on still triangle your square wave, you can see your square wave looks pretty good on channel 2. And let's just keep it right there. Then we'll go ahead and go to megahertz. We'll go 1. And then here you go. So 1 megahertz signal looks like on channel 2. Still bang on. So then we'll go 5, shift. Still pretty good. Hasn't dropped off yet at all. And still looks sort of like a square wave. So we'll go 10, and then here you go. And you can see pretty good, but that's when you start running a little bit of the linen area, and we'll go and put it there, and you can see it drops off a little bit. So there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to my actual signal generator and stuff like that, and we'll see how well it does on channel 1 um, up to 100 megahertz we might go past that just to see how well it does and where it drops off at the negative 3 db mark so we're going to start off where we left off i'm going to feed the scope a 10 megahertz signal at 3 db and we're going to go and do some am modulation so let's go and do some am modulation and right now it's going to be a 10 megahertz carrier and 30 percent modulation and you can see there Pretty nice. So let's go ahead and do something that a lot of people are use a scope for to measure peaks and valleys. So let's just go ahead and do that and let's see if it anti laces because most cheaper scopes do. Okay. Let's just go ahead. And wow. I'm quite impressed with that. For a cheaper scope for being able to do that, it does it quite nice. Let's just see if we can get the rear to wobble a little bit. But yep, pretty good. I mean, it does the job that is quite usable. So let's just go back to, of course, what we would normally be in. All right, and then we'll turn that off. We'll zero this out so it can trigger properly. And then let's go and go to sample. And there you go. And then we're gonna go and turn off modulation. So let me go and turn off the modulation. And then there you go. And then we'll go and do some FM modulation. So let's do FM and we'll do a 2 megahertz carrier. Actually, I gotta do right there. And then we'll go and turn on the modulation. And that's what FM modulation looks like. And it works fine. So there you go. So now I'm gonna go and set the signal generator back up properly. I'll be right back. So let's go ahead and test the bandwidth. And right now it's a 10 megahertz at 3 dB signal is what I'm feeding into there. And I do got a 50 ohm terminated. Let's go ahead and do 20 megahertz. Let's just go and do 30 megahertz. 
And you can see they're toting quite well, actually. We'll just go out a little bit more because we'll go higher. 40 megahertz, 50 megahertz, 60 megahertz, 70 megahertz, 80 megahertz. And yeah, it starts to drop off a little bit, but still within the negative 3 dB mark. 90. We'll go with rated specs. 110 megahertz. You can see that looks quite nicely. The counter is working. We're going to go above that now. 120. 130, which is where it hits below the um, negative 3 dB mark. But still signals quite nice. No wobble even. Nothing. 131. We're going to see where that counter drops off. Because I remember it dropped off at 132. And yep. That's where the counter cuts out. 140 megahertz. 150 megahertz. Let's just go 200. And you can still see the signal at 200 megahertz. 250 and yeah okay so we'll go ahead and go back down to 110 megahertz and so far what i think about this scope very usable it's not gonna be usable for the guys into digital that want the protocol like serial protocol decodes and stuff like that but it's very useful for those that are coming from an analog you know pro pretty much and stuff like that they want to go to a dso and it does the job quite amicably actually it does do its rated specs and it also does it quite well, you know what I mean? Got some nice readable screen. I mean, got basic trigger options and stuff like that, but it'll be fine for most people and stuff. It doesn't do no serial protocol or anything like that for the guys that are doing adrenals and stuff like that. This is probably wouldn't be the scope I would recommend. I would recommend an MSO or a logic analyzer for that, but as far as for the guys doing analog work and stuff like that, just looking for a replacement for their analog scope, this will suit the job fine. It actually does its true 100 megahertz bandwidth on it. And it doesn't, you know, anti-lace and stuff like that as bad. So it's a really good scope. The only thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have 50 ohm termination stuff. But you won't expect it from a cheap scope like that. But for those doing analog work and stuff like that, or repair work, it does fine. It does got a 5 millivolt sensitivity up to 5 volts and stuff like that and the run x of course when you go 10x you got 10 times that but overall it is very super um suitable and it got decent specs so i do recommend this hammer tech dos 1102 oscilloscope